hear me? Yes. Okay. So how are you? How, like it's it's been such an interact a, a crazy two weeks. <laughs> trying to like get in. Uh, yeah. Forth. I'm good. I'm doing good. I've um I'm getting ready to uh, release my EP into the world, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> Honestly, the first thing I want to just um what what kind of got you into your music career? I, I I didn't even ask. Like, how old are you right now? I'm 20. 20. Okay. Yeah. So you, um, you said, I know you, I knew you said you were a college student. Where do you go? Uh, SUNY Purchase. I'm here at the Conservatory of Music. I'm a studio comp student. So songwriting awesome. is my major awesome. essentially. Yeah. That's great. That's, really that's, gotta be, that's gotta be amazing just to like be able to do that every day. Yeah. It's, and also like I have access to all the studios on campus and that's where I've been recording a lot of my music and I met my um, producer here. And I've just nice, made so many nice. like nice connections with musicians, so it's really nice. <laughs> so, what like kind of inspired you to go this route, like to go and pursue a music career? Um, well, I've been playing piano ever since I was six years old. That's when I started taking lessons, um, and it was always kind of just like a hobby. Um, and then around 10 years old I started writing music it wasn't good <laughs> but um just like you know joke songs and like I would I think the first performance I ever did was at my fifth grade graduation um and everybody was always really supportive and they were like you should keep writing songs um yeah. so eventually I just like compiled like a whole you know collection of songs and um my first recording experience was when I was about 13 um, at this studio in the city called Redbird Studio. Um, and it was really awesome because I got to actually go into a studio and work with like a producer and work with these like incredible musicians and record a bunch of my work. Um, so that was like my first real experience with like, you know, stepping into the studio and seeing what it's like to be like a recording artist. What was um, that feeling like when you got there to see everything and to like just be around that for the first time? excitement <laughs> excitement and kind of just like in awe because i like kind of didn't know what i was doing and i was learning so um it was really cool and now it's just something that i love doing regularly so <laughs> yeah obviously you're pursuing a degree in it now <laughs> yeah yeah what kind of what were some things that inspired you to kind of be like to stick with like your genre right that um with pop like what kind of got you into that? like what made you think like this is where i'm gonna go um it's so funny because whenever anybody asks me what my genre is i'm like i never know what to say because i know it's pop but like i don't know what category of pop it is because it's kind of like very instrumental based and like acoustical um because a lot of my songs are like piano based like i start off on the piano sometimes guitar and then just like figure out the arrangements when i'm in the studio and like add whatever i can to make it sound great but i think um like some huge inspirations that have like kept me going like with this path um with this specific genre have been like sarah borellis and ingrid michaelson and like Vanessa Carlton like I listened to a lot of them when I was little and I think that really pushed me in that direction oh I think I hear him Yay. hello hey buddy I got somebody who wants to meet you <laughs> yeah so welcome hey, Julia, back. how you doing good how are you so this good. is this is the guy that wanted to set up the interview and everything <laughs> I <laughs> am just the middleman here <laughs> But um, I wanted to start you off with, I already talked to her about the game. I hadn't told a whole lot. Oh, about the um, questions. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The rapid fire. I think I saw this in your interviews, so. Oh, oh, you've little, seen this. A little sneak peek. <laughs> oh, she's ready. Hey, okay, ready. he's ready. <laughs> all right, um, you want to tag team this? What do you want to do? Go for it. You, it's all, all right, good. Um, we'll, do, we'll do kind of a couple. So I'll go, I'll do like maybe four or five, and then he'll do four or five. How about that? Okay. Cool, cool. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, I think she's ready. All right. Which favorite season? Uh. Wow, your eyes right after spring, that. Spring. Spring. <laughs> favorite meal? Mmm. I feel like. Gotta go. We're on the clock. Really basic. Clock. Pizza, pizza. There we go. All right. Day of the week for chores. Huh? Day of the week for chores. Sorry. For chores. Chores. Um. Laundry, cleaning, that thing. Sunday. Sunday. 
Sunday. All right. Uh, left-handed or right-handed? Right. <laughs> uh, do you like to drive? I can. <laughs> all right. All right. On to the next. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you Mac or PC? Uh, Mac. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, creamy or crunchy peanut butter? Both, but crunchy if I had to choose. Oh, crunchy, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you call it soda or do you call it pop? Soda. Soda. Uh, all right, all right, yep, yep. Um, let's see, crust or no crust? Ooh. Crust. Crust. Okay, gotta right. have crust, yep. Important. Uh, um, let's see. Who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, this is a good Probably Zach Efron. <laughs> all right! <laughs> that's good, that's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, favorite ice cream? Um, cotton candy ice cream from Stewart's. Oh, okay. Stewart's? What's Stewart's? Yeah. Like a gas station. I was introduced to it by my boyfriend who lives upstate, and I've never had it before, and I ate it, and I was like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, all right, and then we'll do one more. Uh, one job you never want to do again. Ooh, a good um, babysitting, but also I probably will do it again. So <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like an inevitable part of life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> someone's gonna ask you. Uh, I did not expect to dive right into this, but um, I uh, I really didn't. Li- <laughs> I, I, had, I did not prep him. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, Take I've your time. To, uh, I've been listening to to Brooklyn this entire first like really, and I yeah. really, really, really like it. It is. Thank you so much. It's lovely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What. What made you choose the genre of music that you're uh, like that you're performing? I really like like what were your influences? I guess. Um, well, I was just talking about how I think a huge part of what makes my genre is the fact that my songs are like piano based because um, that's my main instrument and that's always what I write on, and um, I think a lot like a lot of my music is shaped by the artists that I listened to a lot when I was little. So like. Sarah Bareilles and like Ingrid Michaelson and Vanessa Carlton were like huge influences um, and their style of music like specifically is what I was influenced by and inspired by so I think that like carries over into my music. That makes sense. I can totally see that influence. Yeah. Did you say that you came into it on your own or did you were were your parents listening to that and you kind of got into it with them or like? Um... I think it was more on my own. It was kind of just like music I was finding, and I had like a whole like collection of CDs and everything in my room. Oh, that's pretty um, good. Yeah. yeah, and definitely like my the music that my parents listened to were influences too. Like my dad is a huge Neil Young fan, so I listened to a lot of Neil Young when I was little. Um, the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. classics, classics. <laughs> um, it sounds like you're going in a similar direction with uh, your the upcoming EP Ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, as I've heard, like the music I've heard that you've already put out and everything, um, I, I want to ask you what uh, what's something new that you think that you're doing that that, that you want to do with this the EP and going forward with music. I guess like what's what's a new uh, element or a new emotion that you want to like bring into your arsenal. Um, Well, I think that this EP was a lot more experimental than the first one, so I played around with like um, arrangements and like synth sounds and stuff. Like my first album was very instrumental and everything was done like, you know, like bringing musicians into the studio. And this one was, I mean, we were recording like, you know, during a pandemic, so I didn't have the same like full band experience going on um so it was more just like stuff that I was doing on my keyboard and coming up with so it was definitely like a lot more experimental in that sense um and I also think that my arrangements have kind of become more elaborate um on my first album it was kind of just bringing musicians into the studio and like playing around and then this time I really like took the time to like write out my arrangements and have a clear vision and then like bring Mm -hmm. everyone into the studio and like give them sheet music and everything and yeah yeah (laughs) improvisational yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. that's really Um, cool so that's definitely and it's also kind of just a more mature subject matter i feel like my first album was very focused on um i wrote it during my first semester of college and like being away from home and starting anew so that was like the main focus of that and this ep is more about like the progression of like a relationship so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and starting to 
<laughs> grow up. I mean, like, yeah. you, they, you deal with more like adult and adult things as you get older. Yeah. Like, um, it makes perfect sense. It's crazy how long you've been making music, honestly, I think at this point too. Like the fact that your first album came out, what, like six, seven years ago now? It's like- Yeah, I don't talk about it though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like on my Spotify and everybody always finds it. And then I'm like, please don't listen to it. <laughs> like 14 year old me. <laughs> I know, I was thinking about that exact thing. Cause I was like, this sounds great. It's very, pol it's still polished. Like it's still- Yeah, good. everybody's always like, it sounds so good. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I can't imagine listening to anything I created at 14 and being like happy that people are finding I'm so it. happy that I did this yeah. <laughs> yeah and there's also like the stupid picture of me wearing like a fedora oh, and I'm like leaning <laughs> against the like railing over the water I don't yep. know that's gonna it's be a vintage here soon. Yeah, exactly. Right, that is gonna be like <laughs> the iconic look that's right a classic, right? classic right. 2012 I should bring it back honestly yeah yeah you can bring back a fedora yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, I remember that. That was so bad. The that fedora. was what a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you're, it definitely sounds like you're going into more serious subject material with Ghost. Um, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about writing that song and what yeah. your behind that song was. Um, so that song actually I wrote in high school. I wrote it when I was like 16, um, and I kind of forgot about it for a while. Um, I think I had brought it into a studio once and. Um, the producer wanted to make it really like pop pop um and i was kind of like mm. i was like i know i want strings on this but i'm gonna wait until i have the capability to actually write like a good arrangement for this yeah. so i kind of just like you know kept it in the vault and then um i was kind of having i was in like a writer's rut this these like past few months so i was like why don't i just like try to rediscover some of my old stuff so I found that song. I'm really sorry if you hear squeaking in the background. Oh, <laughs> I'm no. yeah, I don't hear anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're just squeak, squeak. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't hear any squeaks. <laughs> okay, good. they're just being really loud, and I hear it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I I rediscovered that song, and I was like, um, I guess I'll <laughs> write the string arrangement now. So um, that was kind of what I started with. I just kind of like remembered the song and remembered the lyrics and then I sat down and wrote the arrangement um and then it's I was talking about how nice it is to be at purchase because uh, that's my college um the conservatory of music has so many wonderful musicians that I can just you know reach out to and be like you want to play on this I'll pay you in pizza <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and they're awesome. all really nice and like supportive so um, I got a string quartet to come into one of the studios on campus and uh, we recorded both a live video and then like a studio recording of the song. So. That's amazing. I saw the video and I was like, yeah. it looks like you are incredibly professional and polished and like got a whole <laughs> like orchestra to come in for you or something. Yeah, <laughs> I love cool. my strings. <laughs> That's really, really cool. So did you, what? How did you learn how to arrange strings? Because you said that you started piano, and I'm assuming mm -hmm. probably writing, um, you know, vocal arrangements and whatnot. But um, yeah, did you eventually take a class for that, or did you teach yourself? I actually kind of never took a class for it, but um, I think my piano knowledge and just my knowledge of theory has really helped me mm -hmm. to yeah. be able to arrange things. Um, and also just my experience of like doing harmonies and vocals and stuff kind of I'm able to like translate it over to string arrangements and the way I think about it is like I just try to find whatever works best with like the chord that I'm doing and I arrange it that way um, and try to make it as exciting as possible with like movement and um, like color so um, I definitely want to take arranging classes though, because it's always something that I can improve on. So, <laughs> yeah, <it seems laughs> hopefully, like while I'm here, found yeah, good foundational skill to have, you know. Yeah. So, what? Um, I know this is probably gonna like, um, maybe skip ahead a little bit. What do you kind of have planned? I think, or I guess I should, I'll backtrack that. What, um, with with the whole pandemic that's happened this last past year, and mm -hmm. kind of like everybody's had to really change how they go as a musician without touring and shows and stuff like that how have yeah. you like kind of helped like gone to brand yourself or really um, interact with the fans as well as continue to produce music it's definitely harder because like you said like live performances are just 
they're not happening right now and um it's such a huge part of like how musicians you know get their people to come and support them um but now like social media is a huge part of that but i've been able to do some like cool things still um during the pandemic there was a yeah, session i had interview, it's totally dope like yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, there was a session I had a few months ago um, with this uh, studio in Brooklyn called Least of All Recordings, and they what they do is like they bring in musicians, um, like independent artists, to record their songs directly onto vinyl. So it was a really cool thing that I got to do. I brought in like my bassist and my guitarist and a violinist, and we just went into the studio and recorded like three of my songs onto vinyl and it was kind of like a like people would order them and i did like special takes of the songs for those people so oh, wow. that so was cool. really awesome yeah um and my school has been doing some like live stream events so i've been doing that um and yeah the, the pandemic has made it really hard because i was supposed to record a whole album <laughs> right as uh shit started going down <laughs> um so that got postponed and I still haven't done it. So I have a whole like collection of work that I'm just sitting on. Um, so I'm waiting for the right time to record that stuff. My uh, friend and producer, Ash, just opened up her own studio in Westchester. So hopefully when that's rolling, we'll take the opportunity to record some stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's so cool. So have you been recording in just your bedroom lately? Have you been doing a little like home studio type thing or yeah that's definitely where I'll do my like demos and stuff um but we've been recording so my campus the conservatory has a bunch of studios available to the music students so we've been using those and they're like great spaces they're really great studios so awesome. I'm super happy that we've been able to utilize that <laughs> yeah I, mean, I, I thought maybe they'd be shut down during the pandemic but that's that's great yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> excuse me so when did you record um, this EP, this Ghost EP? Was that, um, was that, did that come out of the album that you were gonna release or was that, is that separate? Um, it was kind of a collection of songs that I wrote over the summer with um, excluding Ghost because that was from when I was 16. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it was kind of just, I was having writer's block and then all of a sudden over the summer, I was like, whoa, I need to write four songs now. And so I did that. <laughs> Um, and then uh, we recorded it over the fall because we were back on campus and we had access to the studios and I wasn't working on anything else and I really wanted to do something in the meantime to be productive and you know just I haven't released music since my first album so I really wanted to release music so that's something we did over the fall that's awesome it's a yeah. very autumnal out sounding album honestly it gives me very <laughs> It's a little, little folk, a little bit of folkiness to it. It's like, yeah, nice, yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I uh, was listening to a lot of uh, Taylor Swift at the time when she uh, came yeah, out with uh, her new album. It was, it was, it was too, <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, so inspired. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy. I mean, she drops like back to back. So many songs. So really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, surprise. Yeah. Here, have a <laughs> couple <laughs> years worth of stuff that I made in like. You know, a month. <laughs> Why don't we do that all the time, honestly? It's, 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 yeah. She can go to music that easily. Why not just always yeah. do it? Like, I'm like, how? <laughs> the rest of the time, she's like helping her fans, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, she's got stuff to do. Like, yeah. The rest of the time, she's making the money, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I, uh, let's see, I... Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, did you, did you have a connection to the music scene in Brooklyn? Because obviously, Brooklyn's got an amazing music scene. Yeah. Um, did you grow up going to live shows or feeling connected to the community there? Yeah, um, I wouldn't say that when I was little I went to a lot of shows, but I started gigging a lot around the city when I was about... I honestly don't remember, probably like 13 or 14. Um, when I released that album that I regret, <laughs> um, I had a performance uh, some at the West Village at this venue called Subculture. Um, and then when I was in high school, I went to LaGuardia High School, which is a performing arts school. Um, and a lot of the songwriters in my school were performing at this at the bitter end. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
I got in touch with a guy there who was booking and that became like a staple during high school. Like I kept going back. Um, so that was really cool. And then recently I performed at Rockwood Music Hall um, on the Lower East Side, which is a really cool venue. Um, I got to do that for the release of Brooklyn. I did it as like a release show. Um, so yeah, I've definitely like, I've been to a lot of venues around the city, which is really cool. Um, and I hope to <laughs> come to more when that is possible. <laughs> Gosh, can't wait for that. It's so yeah. sad because a lot of them are going out of business and shutting down. So yeah, I'm sure they can't take this, but yeah, it's horribly depressing to think about. Yeah. I hate mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, I mean, yeah, I just, I don't know. You can't really make money off of live streams as a, as a yeah. thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, well, um, honestly, that's most of my questions. Uh, I, um, um, one question I have is what, what are you kind of planning for the future with this? Like what, um, maybe for the rest of like 2021 and beyond or post pandemic, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, uh, what do you kind of have planned for kind of the rest of your career and this year? Um, well, so this year I'm, this spring, I'm graduating from the graduate program here and um, I have my audition next week for the graduate program here. So hopefully I'll be going into that and I'm hoping oh, to, you know. Good luck. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to learn more about production because I feel like, you know, my focus here has been mostly on composition and I just feel like that's a really necessary skill to have um, if you're recording music so hopefully I'll be able to focus on that and arranging and like marketing and stuff um, mm -hmm. so that's my hope for graduate school and then um, I'm hoping to record that album uh, sometime uh, in the next few months because I already have all the arrangements and stuff it's just a matter of organizing it and getting the band together and booking sessions and stuff. So that would be really awesome to record that and release that maybe next year. Well, yeah. Looking forward to that then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks so much for sitting down, Julia. I uh, yeah, thank you for doing this interview. Thanks again, and good. Um, congrats on graduating later this year, and good luck on getting into grad school. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>